So, the long awaited has finally happened. There's been a human clinical trial, double blind, with a control and two doses of nicotinamide riboside and psilocybine. So, why are we interested? Well, as we age, our NAD levels go down. And NAD, as you know, if you're new to my channel, check out the video in the link up there or below um, that goes into more detail about NAD in the body. But it's used as a cofactor in redox reactions, without which these reactions can't go forward. The example I use is in order to get ATP, the energy currency of the cell, we need an NAD molecule uh, in order to put a phosphate onto ATP. So, look at my video, I go into all, it all there. So aside from day-to-day -day reactions and the fact that NAD levels go down as we age, there were some exciting experiments in mice earlier in the year. They used NMN, a different compound, a precursor to NAD also, and their aging was apparently reversed when they were given NMN. And so, um, the question arose, what would happen in humans, because humans are not mice. There had been a safety trial showing that nicotinamide riboside did not harm participants with an initial dose, but until now, no real human clinical trials. In the future, I'm going to refer to nicotinamide riboside plus psilocybin as NRPT. Before I get into the details, the trial was funded by NRPT commercially known as BASIS, and is a supplement marketed by Elysium Health. But to their credit, to avoid any bias in the collection of the trial data, the trial itself was conducted independently by KGK Synergize. So, what did they do? The title says it all. Repeat dose NRPT, nicotinamide riboside and psilocybin increases NAD plus levels in humans safely and sustainably, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. First, none of the participants knew whether they were getting the placebo or the actual test compound. The test substance was a blend of the nicotinamide, riboside, and the psilocybin, which is an analog of reservoir. NAD and reservoir, like compounds such as psilocybin, activate uh, the sirtuin genes, which are a complex series of genes that are involved in many different physiological functions in the body, as well as being involved in aging. The point of the study was to test to see if the compound was safe and if it indeed raised NAD levels in humans. They also assessed markers of blood pressure mobility, and uh, mobility by a 30-second chair stand test and a six-minute walk. They also looked at a series of blood parameters, such as hemoglobin, red blood cell counts, and so on. Another marker that they examined was cholesterol and triglycerides. The number of participants were 120, and they were between the ages of 60 and 80. 40 were given a placebo, 40 were given a 1x dose of 250 milligrams NRPT, and 40 were given a 2x dose of NRPT, which they took at breakfast for eight weeks. The control and the test subjects were matched for smoking, alcohol consumption, ethnicity, age, sex, and so forth. The results, blood tests uh, show that the 1x dose increased NAD levels by 40%, and the 2X dose initially by 90%, but the 2X group blood level increase was not maintained at 90% for the 60 days, but decreased to above the baseline of the 1X group, but below its initial high levels. This suggests that the body, it likes homeostasis, probably regulates the level of NAD in the blood at any given time. They only took blood samples at day zero, day 30, and day 60, so we only have those points to compare. The results, which were deemed statistically significant over the uh, period uh, of the study, you know, the NAD was higher in the treated group over the control group, and it was statistically significant. But let's look at some of the more interesting findings. Liver enzymes, with one exception, were not affected. 
alanine transaminase in the 1x group, but not the 2x group, decreased. They plan to do future studies on uh, whether or not the 1x dose increases any type of liver health. They also looked at the lipid profile. There were some suggestions that it might have improved some parameters in the overweight people. But remember, there was a variety of different people in this group. Uh, so it's hard to, we really probably didn't have enough to say we have a statistical result here because we don't know how many people were overweight in the group and how many were not and whether it was enough to do statistics on. One of the most interesting uh, things that I found uh, in this study was that mobility increased significantly in the 2x dose for both the chair stand and the six minute walk test. They speculate this might be because of increased muscle health. But they also note that a larger study really needs to be done in order to you know, say this actually does something or not. Uh, and it's not just a random correlation. You know, I'm taking something that's good for me, I'm gonna be more active, I'm, and so forth. There were some adverse effects, both in the placebo and the test subjects. 18 adverse effects were reported, reported by 13 uh, participants in the placebo group, 25 reported by 15 participants in the NRPT group, and 23 reported by 17 participants in the NRP2X group. There were a list of fatigue, diarrhea, headache, and so forth. Um, but as they also were in the placebo group as well as the test subject, they say they probably not linked, but then I don't think you can absolutely say that at this point. And just so you can compare this study to others in the future, what they tested was whole blood, where they lysed it, they broke open the red blood cells, and then they test the remaining solution. So let's wrap up. They do mention that the EU Scientific Committee on Food has established an upper limit of 900 milligrams a day as safe, and these doses were well below that. It was established that two different doses of NRPT increased NAD in the blood of the participants. Some interesting results were hinted at with the liver and lipid profiles that suggest further studies in this particular area. The higher dose seems to improve mobility, but not the 1x dose. We can't say yet whether this will ever reverse aging, but more and more studies are coming out and I'll report on them as they come up. You may also like my video on NAD, which is there and also down there in the link. And um, once again, I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for watching. And let me know in the comments what your interests are, uh, if you found an interesting study you'd like me to look at, and please remember to subscribe. Once again, this is Judy Chalice with Lifespan and Longevity. See you next week.